Denise! Denise! Victims Denise Grobman, civil court judge. She and her husband have lived here for nine years and change. Polite but not chatty. Husband's an architect. What do you got? Victim went down here. 38 sirs. Two rounds fired. Civil court judge needs a gun? Well, maybe she hands out too much alimony. You find the slugs? No. Blood over here can't be hers. She might have hit him two out of two. Good shooting. Fair. Good would be him laying here dead. And over here, we have three cigarette butts. So guy waited here for the first opportunity. Fuse box is open. Maybe it was an electrician working. Maybe. Dusted anyway. Yeah, no problem. APB went out quick. If the carjacker's got two gunshot wounds, how far can he get? I'm feeling lucky. Last time I got lucky was 1986. It's all in the attitude, Lenny. Six, two, four, one. That's it. It's the judge's car. Hey. And we have incoming. What are you doing? Dr. Carton? Who wants to know? I didn't know it was stolen. Is this the guy you bought it from? No. He was older. One of these? You got no record. Why do you want to do this the hard way? A New York State judge was shot over this car. You can probably figure out what that means for you. Which one? Him. Krasner. Bobby Ward. He came by middle of last week, said he had a line on an XJR. Did I want it? He wanted 5K, I told him three. <laughs> the doctor paid 20. Nice profit margin. How'd Bobby Ward look? 5'10, wiry. No, I mean, was he in pain, limping, bleeding? Looked fine to me. Where can we find him? Robert Ward, police, open up. There's nobody home. Get back! Him and his girlfriend left this morning. Get her back! Search warrant! I got it, I got it! Ed, in here. He's alive. Get the paramedics. One in the arm, one in the belly. Looks like the judge did hit him twice. No gun. Daniel K. Ward. All right. Danny said he has a line on an XJR. I told him I got experience. He should let me rip it. He says, no, it's a piece of cake. He just wanted me to help him turn it over. So you talked to Krasner? Yeah. Krasner tops out at three grand. Danny said that's OK, because he's got something in the works that's worth like 10 times that. What was in the works? He wouldn't tell me. 10 times 3 is 30,000. We took almost 15 off of you. Where's the rest of it? That's all he had on him. Well, you ripped a guy off for 15 grand? You didn't even ask him where the rest of it was? Yeah, he said he didn't have it yet. Look, you want more than that, you're going to have to talk to Danny. We got a situation. Looks like that big wad of money was some kind of down payment. Half up front, half later. Murder for hire? Well, that's what it looks like. We won't know for sure until we lean on Cousin Danny. Well, you're going to have to lean pretty far. He just died on the operating table. Thanks for coming in, Mr. Grobman. We know things are tough right now. Anything I can do? Well, obviously, we're trying to tie the shooter to someone who had a grudge against your wife. Well, I don't see how I can help you there. Well, we just wanted to make sure. Now, you said you'd never seen this man, Danny Ward, before. Is that right? Yes. You sure about that? Yes. Why? Because two years ago, you worked closely with him during the construction of the Crosstown Mini Mall. He installed the heat in the air. No, no, not this guy. That guy was heavier. Well, this picture was taken two years ago. His cousin says it's a good likeness. I, I'm sorry, I don't recognize him. Why don't you recognize the name? Well, I never knew his last name. The owner of All Cool says you left instructions for Danny almost every day in envelopes with Danny Ward written on them. Well, uh, you know, it was two years ago. Why was your wife driving on Thursday? Because she wanted to. She said you asked her to drive so you could take a nap. Well, maybe I did. I don't remember. Do you remember why you got out at the front entrance instead of going into the garage with her? Look, I didn't hire anybody. Mr. Grobman, we talked to your doorman. You and your wife went to your cottage 10, 12 times a year. This was the first time you ever got out in front of the building. Yeah, we went to the market. We had grocery bags plus suitcases. Why not let the doorman help? Is that your idea or your wife's? Keep in mind, we're going to ask her, too. Look, my wife is lying in the hospital in excruciating pain. And you're accusing me of putting her there. 
I don't have to listen to any more of this. We were thinking that this was just a coincidence, but you're doing a lousy job explaining it. I don't have to explain anything. Now, get out of my way. Ed, Ed, Mr. Groveman, you sure you don't want to clear this up? Excuse me, but I am on my way to visit my wife in the hospital. You're not going near her. You're under arrest for attempted murder. <sighs> 25 years ago, he was an award-winning young architect. And she was scrambling to pay her student loans. Now the shoe's on the other foot. He suddenly just had enough. The co-op's in her name. The cottage is in her name. His net income last year was half what she made. Where'd he get the money to pay Danny Ward? He put a $20,000 deposit on the land upstate and got it back when they changed their minds. And it was never redeposited? Not in any of their accounts. Carmichael. You're sure? Thanks, Lenny. Bingo. Your clerk left a message at 9.30. Mr. McCoy, this is all the same nonsense. At 10.14, a call was made from a payphone in Sag Harbor. A call to Daniel Ward, the man who shot you. Are you sure? Yes. At 11, your neighbor saw your father in the yard in his jogging clothes, cooling himself off with a hose. Tell the nurse I need Demerol. Now, Dana. You have a witness who saw him use the phone? Not yet. His prints on the keypad? We're running them now. Isn't it obvious what happened? Someone was watching us. That person called Daniel Ward. How did that person know you were going back to the city early? I don't want to hear this. I can't. Of course, she knows Mr. McCoy. We both know that my dad tried to kill her. Did she tell you that she knew? No. She won't even admit it to herself, but I can tell. If she knows, why is she covering for him? Guilt. Guilt? She can't take back who she is. I'm sorry, I'm not following you. My mom's career always came first. And I don't mean that she neglected being a wife and a mother. She just never realized how my dad felt. See, she was more successful than he was. She kept moving up. And he just dreads water. They argued about it? He would shout that he gave up his dreams to move east with her. That she had it all and he had nothing. What was your mother's reaction? Well, she thought they were supposed to be partners. That what was good for one was good for both. She didn't see a problem. Do you want your father to be held accountable? You think your mother might change her mind about facing it? Isn't it obvious that she would rather die than face it? If she dies, it's over. I've tried so hard to talk her out of wanting to die. She still has her mind, and she has people who love her. She's so depressed that she can't think straight. I'm in constant pain. I'm told it will never get better. There's nothing the doctors can do to give me back my life. I don't want to live like this. Does your desire to die spring from your physical condition or from the possibility it was your husband that did this to you? From my physical condition. My husband did nothing. You do understand that we're not here to decide your right to die, don't you? Of course I do, Mr. McCoy. You want to prove I'm irrational, so you can preclude my testimony on behalf of my husband. You left the hospital three days ago, is that right? Yes. Where are you staying? With my daughter and her family. Why not with your husband? Because my daughter lost the coin toss. Could you be responsive, please? My husband has a business to run. My daughter doesn't. Do you get nursing care at your daughter's? Yes. Around the clock? <laughs> yes. Why couldn't they do that just as well at your house? 
My daughter insisted I stay with her. Did she say why? Judge Grobman. You've convinced her? Her father tried to kill me. Do you understand that your husband knew the man who shot you? You say... Do you understand that your husband was one of a very few people who knew that you were coming back to the city early? So what? Do you understand that your husband made the phone call that set up the shooting? I don't know that, and neither do you. But you do understand that your husband resented for 25 years your accomplishments, your success. We had a good marriage. Did he say to you more than once that if he hadn't knuckled under to what you wanted, he'd have gotten the recognition that he deserved? He didn't mean it the way it sounds. How did he mean it? Why do you hammer and hammer at this? Can't you see it's my fault? Please, please leave Walter alone. I've loved him for more than half my life. Everything is my fault. When is this over? When is this over? Lisa, please make them stop. Let me die. I was asked to render an opinion that affects, however indirectly, Denise Grobman's control over her own destiny. I know my ruling here may well affect the outcome of her application for termination of life support. I am devastated by that responsibility. That being said, it is the determination of the court that Denise Grobman is not competent to give testimony in the matter of the people versus Walter Grobman. I want it over. Walter. I want it over. I did it. I did it. I killed her. I did it. Walter, shut I up. did it. I can't take any more. I want it over. Attempted murder, 125 to life. We'll take our chances at trial. No. What about my wife? You have fixed it so that she can't win her application. She'll be like, she'll be like that, that she'll... Civil court won't get word of Judge Pungrasic's decision for weeks. It can all be over before then. We won't oppose her application. Knock it down to attempted murder, too. No. For God's sake, McCoy, toss us a bone. In 25 years, when Mr. Grobman comes up for parole, the DA's office won't oppose it. Grobman passed away an hour ago. Was her husband with her? Yes. I hope he takes that image with him to prison. <laughs> 